VWAP is not a moving average. It's an average price that's cumulative and therefore different from a periodic moving average. I'm saying that because there's been a lot of confusion. Um, I think some traders have spoken about VWAP as though it's a moving average. It certainly looks like a moving average. And I get that people would kind of mislabel it that way. This is the How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast, brought to you by 10MinuteStockTrader.com, where we cover finance, stocks, options, entrepreneurship, education, and money. And here's your host, voted one of the top 100 people in finance, Christopher Ewell. Hey there, traders. Welcome back to today's How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast. Today, we have a special lesson for you. I'm putting it here on the podcast because I really believe that this is going to provide you massive, massive value. And that's what I'm trying to do here. And hey, listen, if this podcast was useful to you at all, I really highly suggest that you go check out the full trading course at AIStockTradingSystem.com. That's AIStockTradingSystem.com. Markets are people. People are predictable. Outlier can show you how to track market fear and greed with artificial intelligence on over 1,300 of the largest market cap names. Visit outlier.com to learn more. That's O-V-T-L-Y-R.com. They have a free pilot program for the rest of 2021 that you can get access to right now at O-V-T-L-Y-R.com. That's O-V-T-L-Y-R.com. Hey, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified every time we give you more tools, tips, and tricks to help you trade faster and trade smarter every single week. Hey there, traders. Welcome back to today's How to Trade Stocks Options podcast. Today, we have a special guest, Zach Hurwitz. Now, Zach has been featured on the Chat with Traders podcast three times now, so I'm, I'm excited to have him on, but he is actually the founder of the VWAP, and we've had other guests talking about VWAP before, and I'm pretty interested to hear... Uh, Zach's opinion on on the VWAP and learn more about him and, and what he does. So Zach, thanks for uh, coming on the line today. Oh, of course, man. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And uh, you know, you mentioned my business and my, my website, the VWAP. Of course, I chose that because that would be the most confusing possible name to have to spell over the phone whenever I'm you know talking to my bank or, or something like that. I clearly picked a, a very clear name. The, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I actually had no idea what VWAP was for the first five years or so. I was trading, mm -hmm. and I kept seeing it, you know, on on the uh, the internet's, you know, VWAP this, VWAP this, and I'm like, what in the world is a VWAP? So I had to Google it. You know, volume weighted average price, and I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now I'm in. I now I understand the lingos, right? <laughs> it's it's like a really obvious and easy idea that is hidden behind a really scary acronym. That's kind of how yeah. I feel about yeah, it. Like, I, I think that. I honestly think part of why people haven't um, come to accept it or learn more about it more easily is because it has kind of a weird name. One of the things that I've uh, played around with, and I'm I'm not too keen on this to be honest, kind of rebranding terms. But I think about what VWAP really represents, and a simpler name for it would be something like true average price. What makes it true? Uh, it's more objective in how it factors in volume to accounting for whether it should adjust the average higher or lower uh, to account for something I think we all know is true, that the big boys kind of control the market. So we would want to account for when more money is traded in a stock. That should shade or tailor our view of where the adjusted or actual average price in a security is. Hmm. Okay. Well, before we go down that road, let's have a little yep. background on, on who you are how the VWAP came to be, how you got so interested in the VWAP slash true average price. Um, let's, let, let's hear about uh, the Zach story. Oh, gosh. All right. So I want everyone to rewind to 2007 and 2008. Um, I was a, a senior up at Tufts University up in Boston, and I was a, an English major, as a matter of fact. I remember at the very last possible minute I could, I switched to being an economics major because I had been writing a paper for what was my econ minor at the time um, about systemic banking risk. And it was literally happening as I was writing this paper. Um, and I want to be crystal clear, I was not like at the forefront of that research. I was writing a paper about what was occurring, simply put. But it kind of dawned on me that um, economics wasn't so academic, it could be kind of practical. And that really excited me that I could participate in that through the stock market. 
I remember downloading, I think it was Thinkorswim, believe it or not. I, I'm, I'm still charting and, and using Thinkorswim quite a bit. Um, but I downloaded an app. I was, I remember in my dorm room in college, it was that last semester. And, you know, while I do regret not spending more time kind of enjoying my college experience and hanging out with my friends that last semester, it really was formative for me as a trader, um, simply because that was 2008, you know, it was, it was the start of the fall of 2008. I'm really glad now that I have that experience and, and didn't miss that. Um, but, you know, a little bit of regrets that I, I didn't enjoy my time in college too. Uh, graduated and instantly became an independent trader, moved back to Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, in around 2010, probably discovered the volume weighted to average price uh, for myself. And when I say discovered, I, I also want to clarify, it's not like I invented it or was the first person to discover it. There are many other people who have spoken about it over the last probably 30, 35 years. Um, in 2010, when I first encountered VWAP, I mean, what excited me about it was it was intuitive. It really resonated with me in kind of my limited trader brain. I could understand the math behind it and the design for it. And it was visually very clean. So I liked that a lot. Um, and that was the first thing that kind of started to get me towards consistency. So my first year, year and a half of trading was, uh, I'll say this politely, chaos. And, and in both directions, as most traders are, right? They have, Listen, if you they, only had a year of chaos, you did good. I know myself, oh, yeah. it took me at least four years, at least, to figure things yeah. out. And then uh, Mark Minervini, um, I'm mm -hmm. sure you know who yeah. he is. Yeah, he yeah. famously talks about how it took him six years. And and I, I I mean, if you did a year and a half, you you're quite the scholar. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment. I mean, I'll say a year and a half until I got out of the chaos period, and then probably another two years for what I would call consistency. Um, so just to be clear, I'm I'm certainly not ahead of of some of the greats in terms of their speed of progress. Um, but but yeah, I remember that feeling of finding a, a piece of technical information that made sense to me and resonated with me and made me feel like I actually understood why I should be buying and selling um, because of it. That felt really good compared to, you know, I'm following someone on a forum or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, an indicator I don't understand. And I feel like that's what most traders experience when they're relatively novice. They're trading something they don't understand why, but the signal says they should and that has to be good enough. Um, as you increase in skill, obviously, you kind of get to the same point where you're mechanically reacting. That's also because you've internalized so much of like the actuality of the indicators. You do understand them and you do understand the nuances of them. You do understand when they don't apply or you should ignore them. You have a much more sophisticated understanding. But anyway, back to my, my uh, sort of story in history. Uh, mid 2010s, I remember uh, I'd been working in chat rooms with a number of traders, just kind of being a talkative, dorky, helpful guy. And uh, I was teaching people a lot about VWAP and about how I had kind of learned to use it. People asked me about the primary patterns that I was trading with it. And so I kind of on the fly. Oh, the market open. No sorry for the background <laughs> noise. Yeah, I feel like that's that's probably okay. I'll go ahead. Um, you know, I, I was working with traders kind of one-on-one -on -one informally to coach them. And I, I loved talking about the kind of primary patterns that I had found and, and on the fly really had to develop a bit of what has turned into now my, my coaching, if you will, methodology, um, and eventually a recorded course through the volume weighted average price.com, the vlab.com to be clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, founded that in, in 2015 and have been working with traders ever since uh, to, to kind of popularize and, and bring view up to the masses. That's the quick catch up. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the, the website, the viewapp.com, you yep. coach traders through there. How does that, what's that process look like? That's not something that I've gone down before, <laughs> mainly because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit nervous of the time commitment of what it would take <laughs> to go with the trader. So, so walk me through that process of what that looks like for you and, and the way that you work with them. Okay. So, um, I'm going to kind of define some terms in, in my experience over the last couple of years. There's teaching, which is relaying the same information you've, you've relayed to many people, right? You're kind of teaching the basics. Um, then there's coaching, which is interacting with a student, typically one-on-one, -on -one, to answer questions and kind of tailor it to their experience or desired result. Uh, and then finally, I'd say there's mentorship. Mentorship is 
like full scale development stage one to 10, you take the trader as far as you can get them. Um, I don't do mentorship simply because of the time commitment and the price would, would not be affordable for most traders. And I wanted to put something out there that could get in the hands of a lot of people. I wanted to have impact on a lot of traders, not like five traders, you know, who, who have all paid $25,000 or, or something that didn't seem very efficient or like it was getting VWAP out to enough people. Um, coaching I did for a long time, kind of going down the tiers, right? There's mentorship and coaching. Coaching I had done for a long time uh, in terms of one-on-one -on -one meetings with traders from 2015 to uh, about late 2019. I think I worked with, I want to say about 600, maybe 500 or 600 traders one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and while that's you know, that gives me the option to connect with each student. I think it, again, isn't the most time efficient way I could approach this. And so putting together a recorded course makes the most sense because then by the time I'm actually getting to coaching or interacting with any one student, uh, they've already kind of got 90% of my method, uh, my methodology, excuse me, uh, under their belt. So that's really important. Yeah. I, Easy I, for them, for example, yeah. Spain. Well, I, I really like that. And that's kind of the path that I went down. Um, so I've got a $97 course. Um, so very affordable, right. obviously. But the yeah. idea here is to reach as many people as possible. And I can't do that if I'm doing one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, there's, not, there's 19 lessons and then 10 real trade examples that I put on. Um, and so, you know, just being able to connect with them in that way, I feel it's really efficient for not just me, but for them, because they can take it in their own time they can take it and move forward and, and, and learn step by step in a manner, in a manner that, that works best for them. So yep. I'm glad to see that, uh, you know, at least we're on the, the same page on, on understanding what's a good way to deliver that. But then at the same token, there's so many like scammy people, you know, fake gurus, um, mm -hmm. all this stuff. Like, like right now I've been bombarded on YouTube by this. Uh, I, he couldn't be more than 19. Yep. And he's like, uh, 10 courses, more than 20 hours of content, no breakout pullback BS strategies. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what do you even know about trading? Like, well, no, well, no offense, but really. Obviously, breakouts and pullbacks are BS. I don't, I mean, that's what I've learned in 14 years of, of active trading. Breakouts don't exist. And the market's efficient, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Well, right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, it's funny. Let's talk about that for, for just a second. I know the type you're talking about, I, I want to say it's very Gen Z crypto oriented. Um, they all have the same haircut that looks like a, like a pitcher with macaroni spilling out of the top. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, yeah. I think it's, it's something you don't want to discourage, right? Because we want to encourage kind of the democratization of finance and trading. We want people to be in this profession, but I want people who are serious and committed and going to stick. Um, you know how this business works. There's going to be a lot of people who try trading and trading is not for them and they will quickly figure that out. Um, I think the people who are going to succeed in trading don't need any encouragement or enticement. The people who are going to succeed don't need an ad hyping them up, you know, getting them ready to trade. That's just not who a trader is. They're not going to be easily lulled or swayed by that. So I think a lot of people who want to wear the mask of a trader, who want to put on the Batman suit for 10 minutes, that's who most traders are in actuality. And it's kind of hard for them to acknowledge that. One of the things I talk about, and whether it's inside of a trade or in this profession, is to fail quickly and fail gracefully. I coach a lot of traders who really don't want to end up trading. You know, after months and months of their hard work, they kind of go, I realize I don't actually want to sit in front of a screen all day. Is that okay? And I say, yes, you should figure that out quickly without risking a ton of money. I mean, that's the goal of, like I said, whether you're in a trade or more broadly in this profession. Um, and, and yeah, it's not like this is anything new. I think we should probably also clarify that this is not the first time that scammy youtube ads have been run about a platinum level master class you know that's been around for decades it just had a different form probably 20 or 30 years ago we'd be railing about these guys renting the a Sheraton, you know 
right? <laughs> yeah, the infomercials or like the in-person seminars. I remember a lot of those um, getting like in-person mailers in like 2008, 2009. That'd be like, come to Sarasota, Florida and learn our options trading like master class. You know, of course, um, everything is always platinum level. Uh, it's always a scary price. Uh, yeah. So anyway, sorry. Uh, no, 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 it's all good. I, I mean, I like we, for... we both share the same like ennui, like hatred for a new resentment for that kind of stuff, because for those of us who actually have something to say and are putting in the work and care about trader development and aren't trying to charge $15,000, it, it's insulting. It's intellectually insulting. You right. Know? But, but imagine like you went to Tufts, right? You probably yep. paid more to Tufts yeah. than what your course costs. Yep. Um, and you know, with that being said, you went to Tufts, you're not going to get a wow. refund. You got to yep. learn the process. You spent years of your life doing this yep. and you know, it, it's not, it's not like we can just give you everything in the world for free. We yep. could. And, and honestly, if you go back in my 502 episodes so far, like everything I do is spelled out in there, but putting it in a concise step-by-step -step format and then being able to like assign a value to it. And the mm -hmm. value, like I said, it, it doesn't have to be astronomical, but it's mm -hmm. the fact that when someone pays, they pay attention. If you go That's and watch all the YouTube videos in the world, you don't pay as much attention as if you like committed to saying, I am now going to pursue this, right? If you went to Tufts and you didn't have to pay a cent, how often would you actually go to class? Okay, so you make a really good point and connecting this back to trading education and the kind of like, you know, buy my DVD, it's only a couple thousand dollars. Um, there is a like a commitment principle of consistency that I think happens in traders when they pay for something like that. Because if you ask them, hey, was that DVD worthwhile? They don't want to look like an idiot and go, oh, no, man, I wasted all that money. Yeah, I'm, I got released. You know, they don't want to admit that. So they're going to say, well, you know, it's good that it covers like, you know, the basics. Like, it's nice to have all that material in one place. In, you know, they're they're rationalizing like they're. They paid four thousand dollars for YouTube videos, mm -hmm. um, so I know what you're describing, and I've, I've seen it a lot with people not wanting to feel like they've overpaid, and that's why I think trading edu educators more broadly try and price things quite high. Uh, once someone's in the door, it's hard for them to emotionally or mentally go back on their principle of kind of like I'm a trader. This is going to help me. This was a good investment. That railroad track that they're setting mentally for themselves, it's very hard to get off. Um, so, no, 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 I, I agree. And then, um, I, so in my company, we, we have a, a, a refund policy that's similar to like if someone downloaded a game. So it's yeah. like two weeks uh, yeah. or up to 25% of the, uh, the material. material. That makes because we really sense. want you to like commit to it. And if you're not going to commit to it, it's okay. Take your money and go. Like mm -hmm. if you want a refund, I will not stop you from that because that means you and I didn't connect in that way. And yep. you can move on. So, yep. yeah. But with, with that being said, I think that there is a lot of opportunities for people to learn. And all the different ways there are to, to learn. Like for me, I love trading options. Uh, mm -hmm. I love trend trading. But at the same time, VWAP is not in my sphere whatsoever. And the same token, you and I are still trying to reach the same point, which is go from you know a lower price to a higher price if we're buying a stock. But we're going about it in our own individual way that we've identified with, like you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier on. And I think that's critically important. Being able to test the waters, put your toe in, see what works for you. And then once you've discovered something you, you, you connect with, you click with, or a person you click with, mm -hmm. then you can go deeper down that, really learn it intimately. So tell me more about what you think about the whole VWAP as an indicator. Um, because, you know, there are people out there that look at VWAP like a, uh, moving average mm -hmm. and, um, that's kind of how I envision it, but you and I, we actually spoke before, um, that's mm -hmm. not exactly the same way that, that you envision it. And mm -hmm. tell me some of the ways that you use it. Certainly. So, uh, this is the first and most important thing I have to say, I'm going to look right in the camera while I say it, because it's critically important. Uh, VWAP is not. A moving average. It's an average price that's cumulative and therefore different from a periodic moving average. I'm saying that because there's been a lot of confusion. Um, I think 
some traders have spoken about VWAP as though it's a moving average. It certainly looks like a moving average. And I get that people would kind of mislabel it that way. Um, there is something called a volume weighted moving average. That is not VWAP. And that is not what I'm talking about. A cumulative average price is unique in that it anchors to an inception point and then goes forever or until you tell it to reset uh, forward in the future. A normal moving average is the same thing in terms of persistence or constants. Uh, constants, I just make that word up. Uh, it's being constant is what I'm arguing on the chart, kind of um, persisting across the entirety of the chart. But it only looks back X number of bars. It's kind of going from the right backwards as opposed to a VWAP, which is starting from a point on the left of the chart and calculating forwards. Um, a volume weighted average price kind of represents the average price since an event. Typically, when people talk about VWAP, they're talking about an intraday VWAP that starts at 9.30 in the morning, resets at 4 p.m. Uh, but you could also anchor a VWAP to a critical multi-day event. Maybe on a daily chart, you'd be looking at launching a VWAP from earnings going forward. And notice I'm talking about this not in the number of bars, which would represent periodicity, 20 bars, 50 bars back, 200 bars we're talking about the inception point of an event. That's kind of the more intuitive way that humans think about a stock chart anyway. And conveniently, that's how we determine where, uh, as I keep kind of calling it the inception point, I guess I'll, I'll keep calling it that, uh, where, where the starting point maybe of the VWAP uh, should be. Well, let, when, me, yeah. let me just ask you a question on that, right? So I'm gonna pull up a chart. We can screen share because I, I kind of want to get your perspective on this. Give me just a second here. Sure. Um, and, and you can teach me and teach everyone else as we go. Sure. Uh, so Facebook had strong earnings mm -hmm. and then it petered out and went sideways after that. So tell me your perspective on like, would we want to tag it to the earnings point? Would we want to tag it to the after the earnings point? Gotcha. So hang on, let me let me let me share my screen. Yeah. That, that way it'll be a little bit more interesting. Share screen. Screen two. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. And, okay, cool. Uh, so here's me, Facebook. If I'm getting a little close to the camera too, so I can see. No, it's I'm all good. It's all good. Phone. Go go for it. So would, <clears throat> in the way that you're looking at it, would mm -hmm. you like anchor the VWAP to the point before the earnings or anchor it to the point after the earnings? Because you were saying we need that anchor point. Like what's more important mm -hmm. to you before or after? Probably after in this case, because everyone reacting after is obviously reacting to news that they had, whereas the people beforehand were making kind of prognostications about what that binary event would be. So if I had to pick definitely the day of the event or the day right after the event, et cetera. Okay. You can also just throw this out there while we're on this yeah. kind of minor micro subject, you can actually launch VWAPs from both days and compare um, just how similar they really are to each other albeit they'll be very different at the start. Notice how they converge over time. I, that's exactly what it's doing right there. Right. I mean, yes. like exactly what you're describing is, is what I'm seeing here, right? So they have two different starting points and they're kind of funneling to the same exit point. And, and a great real world analogy, how I tend to think about a volume weighted average price is like a cumulative grade point average. So we've all experienced something like this in you know high school or college, right? We have our grades and it's our cumulative grades over the entire time we're there. When I look at these two VWAPs, notice that they cover 99% of the same data. The separation between them, the delta between them, the difference between them is one bar. Now, granted, that's an important bar, and there's a lot of volume in that bar, so there is going to be some price separation between the two VWAPs. But as time goes on, the similarity of the data is not, um, hey, VWAP 1 has two bars, VWAP 2 has just a single bar they're off by, let's say, a factor of two to one, right? The number of bars. As time goes on, well, their number of bars is still going to be off by one. But that number has grown considerably. So now it's 15 or 20 bars total, and they're off by, again, just one. 
Sure. What I'm saying is, you know, the difference between these two is going to minimize over time as we add in more and more data. The difference is not just a drop in the, I shouldn't say a drop in a uh, cup now, it's a drop in the bucket or a drop in the swimming pool. It's an inconsequential difference over time between two similarly started VLAPs. That's my point. So what to you, what does this tell you? Because we've got mm -hmm. basically a $22 difference between the two, two periods. Mm -hmm. They're converging right now, interestingly, at what the price is at the moment, mm -hmm. around, let's call it 31650 mm -hmm. What does that tell you? Does that mean that the value now is a good buy? Does that mean the value now is, is too high because it's over? What is it? What, how do you interpret that data? Sure. So we'll let's let's take this like left to right. We'll end up at our conclusion about the current scenario, but let's talk about the difference between those two view apps briefly because I think this will this will help explain a little of, of what a view app represents. Since we're talking about the average price since an event, and this event that we're measuring, we're kind of measuring from two very nearby starting points. The first view app, the lower of the two, represents people who try to anticipate earnings. We don't know any one trader. We're not examining any one trader. We don't know their executions. But if we looked at that one day and kind of assumed the avatar of a trader, right? The average man, the you know amorphous person we don't know, but whatever, they represent a trader from that day before earnings. We now have a visualization of the average price that that trader paid on that day for Facebook. Trading below that would represent a ton of pressure to people who had traded on that day. So you can actually see in the ensuing candles after we um, you know, opened up after earnings and then started to challenge down below uh, that lower view app. That's kind of like an early warning signal of the soul of the move being challenged. Some traders who were going long the day before earnings might have felt, you know, gosh, I got to hold on until this breaks to a new low below the day of earnings before I acknowledge defeat. You can kind of imagine that you're long going into earnings, gaps up, that's great. If it comes back down to my entry, I'm out or below that, I'm out. Well, the problem there is you are waiting for a ton of vertical distance for a confirmation of a new swing low. When my argument here, visualized by that lower view app, is that represents a kind of aggressive, not moving average, but curvilinear line of support or resistance, a view app in this case, it represents the average price since an event, which when crossed, gives us a heads up to some sort of perspective character change in the market. Um, to go to the kind of current bar and what you're asking about, what does this mean or represent? It shows that we are uh, after some multi, I mean, these are daily candles, right? Right. Um, multiple, you know, kind of days of challenging the underside of those VWAPs. I'm talking four, five, six bars ago from the current one. Right. Uh, so yeah, right in there where you're circling is perfect. Yeah. Um, notice that, you know, after a little bit of challenging at that VWAP, we are now bubbling or boiling uh, through it. We churned through some of the supply, the cautious sellers from overhead resistance. I would argue that the longer we stay above water here, the more likely this looks like a, you know, blue skies ahead uh, kind of chart. I want to be clear. We're talking about Facebook. It's a daily chart I've looked at, you know, now on my phone for a grand total of four minutes. None of this is trading advice. You know, the usual. No, no, no. Standard. Of course. Of I course. know. I know. I, I just wanted to, uh, well, obviously we're, we are confirming that you know what you're talking about, which you know, obviously <laughs> you knew ahead of time. Uh, yep, I, yep. I, I, well, I tell you, I, I'd have a, a foot in my mouth. If I pulled this up and you'd be like, well, um, uh, <laughs> what, what, uh, what, well, I, uh, I don't really know. I don't know. I don't look at, I don't look at charts, Chris. What are, what are these? What, what do you, um, what do you mean? No, 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 no. no. But, no. but that, that makes a lot of sense. And that's kind of why I wanted to pull it up. It's just like to visually grasp what we're talking about. And cause Facebook was on my mind yesterday. I, I heard somebody talking about how it had, uh, I haven't traded Facebook in months, um, but how it had a, a, a big run up and then kind of like it died out going forward after that, mm -hmm. after earnings. And so that was my first thought is, okay, what, what did it look like view at before and after? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, this is pretty interesting. Okay. What I, what I would recommend while we're on this chart, if you don't mind launching a view app from the most recent short term, or I hesitate to call it a swing low, but yeah, your, your cursor is almost on it. So, so like this one here, there you go. It, perfect. Yep. Yeah. That would be great because that would give us a kind of measurement of uh, 
hesitate again to use this term. It's not macro support, but on, on a daily chart, a larger term support. We're not intraday. We're not looking at the nitty gritty. Knowing where some support level VWAPs are to complement with our resistance VWAPs uh, creates a kind of funneling effect. This is relatively natural in the trading world. You've probably seen this and called it, I would argue, some sort of a wedge or a flag, perhaps. I am and not is, a uh, a chart. Dr- <laughs> I got to yeah, chartist. That's okay. Oh my gosh, my uh, I, I tell people this all the time. Like I could not. A, I have no idea what all of the candles mean, like mm-hmm. a doji and a hammer and all mm-hmm. that stuff. It's just not my thing. I, it's not my world, right? We talked about what you should connect with. I don't connect with that. Yeah. And then when people no, draw no. lines on a chart, that is so far out in left field to me. It's like you've got a crayon and you're just coloring on it to me because I really just don't get it. But that's just my opinion. No, it's I'm so glad subjective. you said that. I'm glad you said that. That's exactly right. It is so subjective. And notice that what we did here is very similar to that, but there's a key distinction. We're not drawing the lines. We're choosing the inception point for the line, just a single point, and the math is doing the rest of the heavy lifting. That sounds like a small point, but that's really important that it removes a ton of discretion from the trader. There are times when you should take away the options for a trade, no pun intended, not literal option, but take away the choices or alternatives for a trader. You don't need them to figure out, uh, should I anchor this to the candle wick or do I go to the body? And then how do I draw this trend line? That's garbage. You don't need to be deciding or worrying about that kind of discretion. Um, With VWAP, we kind of also know that because it's out of our hands, we can't manipulate it. We can't tweak it. We can't really barely even curve fit this. I mean, we could move and try and change it to a different day or see some other VWAP, sure, but there's really not much change um, we can apply to this. And that's actually a very good thing uh, because that means that the math is the math. These average price levels are where they are. If price violates them, we have to react to them. There's uh, kind of I, no confusion I, in that regard. I agree with you a million percent here because it's it's all math, right? All, all the successful traders that I talk to have so much of their trading plan developed mm-hmm. around math. And sometimes they, they might use like, I'm going to just like a fool, try and draw a line right here, right? Or uh, 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 what, what do you call these? Like these uh, rays or whatever they call them, right? Oh, like okay. a trend line. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, so if if I like it here, because it touches those points, mm-hmm. but then I, I'd like it more here, I'm going to go with this point, right? But then at the same time, you can go and, you know, let's, let's just remove all. Um, mm-hmm. And then talk about like the fact that these are math based and you could throw on a 10 day exponential moving average. Just for example, that's sure. math based. You can see actually what prices have done versus trying to fit your lines into whatever scenario that is. So that's just personally how I look at it. That's how I trade. I really like the fact that w- we agree with that. We use different different methodologies, but at the same time. Mm-hmm. We both understand the uh, the data aspect of what we're looking at here. Certainly. Well, think about the, the kind of thematic important thing is that the lines are curved, not straight, because the market tends not to move or respect in straight lines. And I know everyone's going to send me a thousand trend line charts to prove me wrong now or something. But uh, you, you've seen m- those memes on the Internet, right, where it's like, you know, it's a picture of a chart. It has literally hundreds of lines all oh, over it. Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, it, and people used to tell me my charts looked like Star Wars, right? Just oh, yeah. red and green lasers <laughs> going in every direction. Um, but but to the point of, of like this chart and, and curvilinear versus linear, right? Curved lines versus straight lines. That was a huge uh, breakthrough for me to realize that curved lines are probably the correct answer because they're dynamic and change with information as the information presents it. And then the second important point is that they're out of our control. Because they are curved lines, they're not curved lines I generate. I'm not typing in an equation. I'm not deri- you know, deriving fit points and adjusting it on the chart. I'm just saying, yo, tell me the average price since something happened. Mm-hmm. And that's it. It's relatively fast, clean, minimalist. And I keep using this word, but it really is the best word, intuitive. Uh, it kind of resonates with how you would approach the chart naturally. If you were talking to a buddy about the chart, you'd say, well, how'd they go you know, since last earnings? Okay, well, what about since the breakout of that flag? Okay, now what about since Musk tweeted about them? You know, you kind of 
go through the story of the stock in a very human experienced way. It's not like we look at this and say, you know, Christopher, please tell me the you know, the average price of the last 42 bars, because we're not robots. We don't think like that. We might have to use mechanical or periodic analysis like that, because that's what's presented to us, or that's what's available in the charts, or that's what's taught to us as tradition. And I reject that. I, I insist that something like, and I mean, obviously, you know what it is for me, it's VWEP. Um, something exists out there, <clears throat> VWEP, that allows us to automatically get context on any chart. What I love about VWEP is that I tend to look at the kind of same charts over and over. And what I mean by that is I'm using a consistent visual framework. And so I'm not like out of my depth when looking at a new chart, a ticker I've never considered before. I'm judging it against my accrued experience of 20,000, 50,000, whatever, uh, you know, hours of, of looking at, uh, at, at these charts with the same tool for analysis. You know, the, I'm trying to think of the, the right analogy. It's like if you used, you know, Doppler radar and only Doppler radar, you'd become an expert on Doppler radar. Yeah, that right? makes total sense. Right. Now, now, fortunately, I've, I've picked something that has credibility and has been around for decades, you know, and has uh, visible chart efficacy. So it's not like I'm, I'm trying to convince everyone that uh, there's validity in, in lunar cycle trading. And again, forgive me if you're a lunar, lunar cycle trader, please, <laughs> please don't send me a bunch of charts with the moon phase on them. No, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to look at them. So. It's all good. But I, I think what you're trying to get across is it's, it's something like Bruce Lee, I think said, you know, maybe it was Jackie Chan. I don't know. It was mm -hmm. one of those like Kung Fu guys, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't fear the man who knows a thousand punches. I fear the man who knows one punch and has thrown it 10,000 times. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll also tell you that, that a lot of traders ask me for kind of broad trading wisdom or advice when they're starting out. I say like, remove the cloak of being a trader, like stop, trying to be a trader and and just learn how like a couple key patterns work you don't need to master everything you don't need to know every bit of technical analysis you're definitely not going to remember all of them or apply any of them probably but if you become a bull flag trader and by the way because we were talking about this before when we were doing the um uh the chart just a moment ago any type of flag or wedge, and I know maybe most of your listeners might know this, but also for you, it's just a consolidation towards two points. It's kind of like if you imagine uh, you know, a first grader drawing a comic, how would they draw a flag? It, it would go up and then be a little triangle. That's it. It wouldn't be complicated. Well, that's that same kind of pattern we're experiencing, uh, converging towards a point. Um, and the reason I actually uh, bring that up, if you're, you know, if you're a bull flag trader, for example, and you remember that chart that Chris had up just a moment ago, the VWAPs were kind of funneling towards a point. Uh, I mentioned that because I think people crave linearity in their patterns. They crave uh, a simple flag pattern like what we were describing. The actuality of the market is probably going to be a little more complicated, and it's going to be curvilinear, not linear. That's where VWAP comes in at kind of accurately describing what we experience as support and resistance. Nothing is linear for long in the market. There's new information; those lines will need to change. And VWAP does a very good job at uh, articulating that relatively automatically on your chart for you. I thought it was really elegant. The math spoke to me. Uh, it was kind of clunky and weird, and of course, the acronym made it sound super strange. But that made me love it all the more. Um, and that's why I've kind of internalized it as something like true average price. It's easier to say. Uh, it certainly resonates in my brain when I when I say it to myself that way. Why this is so critical uh, in my trading development, and you know, perhaps for for others. So. Yeah. Well, cool, Zach. I tell you what, we uh, we have definitely learned a lot today, um, and I want to make sure that everyone heads over to thevwap.com. Is that correct? Yeah. So the easy okay. way to remember it is T H E V W A P. Really simple. Yeah, the like you had to explain on the phone a hundred times, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. I got to say this. I know we're wrapping up, but um, every time I call my bank, they say, the VWAP? What the hell is that? And I go, no, no, no. It's the VWAP. We just didn't have a space in the name because that's an acronym. And I have to explain what VWAP is. It's a whole pain. I, I, I probably would rename things if I could, but that's you know, okay. Um, what I did personally. So um, 
super off topic here and like way yeah, way deep in like stuff we shouldn't cover on the show but like <laughs> the uh my company is actually called yule holdings llc and then mm -hmm. a, then a dba as um 10 minute stock trader so gotcha. uh it, i i went super nerd as possible so my yep. company's name is uh llc and my last name is uhl oh wow oh, yeah. that's good yeah i went real deep on the nerd train right there so no i okay, get it now, man all that now all that. the listeners pay attention we're going to release chris's uh ssn as a follow-up to this oh, episode. Oh, yeah, it's so 837. Right. <laughs> Everyone get ready. This is the bonus part of the episode. Here's the giveaway. It's yes. Chris's identity. Uh, okay. Just the company's identity. It's all right. I got yeah, insurance. Yeah, yeah right, right, right. right. <laughs> no, man, I've, I've had a blast. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, hey, this was, uh, this was a good intro. I feel like uh, we could definitely have you back on again in the future. Um, Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. I'd be happy to. Well, um, hey, listen, make sure everybody heads over to thevwap.com to learn more about Zach and what he's doing there. And Zach, thanks for coming on the show. Of course, my pleasure. And thank you guys for tuning in to today's How to Trade Stocks Options podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enable notifications. That way you never miss any of the tools, tips, and tricks we upload every single week to help you trade faster and trade smarter. And I'll see you on the next episode. Okay, so what'd you think? That was pretty incredible, right? Now, if you like that, that's only a taste, only a sample of what you're gonna find in the full AI stock trading system. And I really highly encourage you to go and check this out. Obviously, you are interested in learning and how to trade, and that's why you're listening to this podcast. Now, I'm going to take and download my entire trading system that I use day in and day out onto you. <laughs> and the only way I'm gonna be able to do that is over at the AIStockTradingSystem.com. You're gonna get phase one, two, and three, several bonuses, and on top of that, I'm going to walk you through over a dozen trades that I put on inside of my account, holding your hand and showing you exactly how I got in, how I got out, how I use the artificial intelligence data, and how this could work inside of your own trading portfolio on a daily basis. So make sure you head on over to AIStockTradingSystem.com. That's AIStockTradingSystem.com to learn more and to get started and to download my decade plus worth of trading experience into your hands so you can start using the AI Stock Trading System today, the five-step system to take the guesswork out of trading. Hey, if you like this video, let me know by leaving me a like below and then subscribe and share it with somebody you think could use it as well. Be sure to comment below with your biggest takeaway from this episode and any suggestions you have for future episodes. And finally, make sure you watch these other videos to help you trade faster and trade smarter, and I'll see you